Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of mprugs.com. My name is Mike. I'm the moderator in a series of videos that is all about handmade carpets from around the world. I welcome you to our channel and I hope you and your family are doing well. In today's episode, I want to answer some of the questions that I've been getting and that has to do with signatures, specifically on silk carpets. So if you are someone, whether you own one or whether you're um, looking at one or if you, this is something that you're interested in, in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to several different weaving houses of Persian silk rugs. I'm going to introduce you to some of the weavers and also give you a little bit of a background because there's a lot of confusion. Um, there are a lot of folks who have emailed me as a result of our channel as well as when they visit mprugs.com and they ask about the signatures on rugs, whether the signatures add value, whether they are really important, whether they are genuine. And um, this is something that I have spent, uh, well, I've created multiple videos where, for example, we talk about the Nain rugs, one of the best known types of Persian rugs. And especially the high-end pieces, they all have the fake Habibian signature. This is one of the most famous weavers of Persian rugs. It happens to be in Nain, really made the Nain rugs famous. Well, he's been dead for, well, what we're looking at close to 30 years. And yet his name is so synonymous with high-end, the Nain rugs, that they still incorporate his signature style in a lot of the Nain rugs. And the same happens with a lot of Persian rugs, a lot of handmade rugs. You have the same thing happening, for example, with Turkish, with the silk rugs, the Heraki pieces. But one of the most common types of Persian rugs where signatures are found is in the pure silk Gom rugs and I got three of them hanging here. I have another one that I'm actually going to be um, showing you in a little bit of another well famous uh, weaving house. But the point I was trying to make um, in the other videos and that I'm going to show you again today is while well, signatures are nice, they are not necessarily a sign of value and they are not necessarily something that you should be paying more for. And, and it's some of the different types of Persian rugs, and I'm gonna showcase two examples here today in this video. I'm gonna show you two gom rugs. These are all pure silk. They're all handmade. They're all made in popular known workshops in the city of Gom in Iran. So I'm gonna to explain to you how they're all very different, um, how they're similar with different types of designs, obviously, and also range in quality, and why as a result, the pricing is also different. But what is most importantly, and this is really what I want you to remember if you're watching this video, please, just because you see a signature in any of the rugs, that does not mean that A, the weaver is famous. It doesn't even mean that the signature matches the person who actually made the rug. Because signatures like the gom rugs, they are, the name that you see in the rug is the workshop that either hired the weaver or the weaver works for that workshop. So uh, sometimes um, when it comes to the Parisian rugs, you will have where, let's say we own a wholesale business, and I'm just gonna use ourselves as an example. Well, let's say Mike decides he has become well known and he is going to start designing, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna design my own type of rugs. Perfect example, the Serafian family. The Grandmaster Serafian never made a rug on his own. He was a, a banker. 
he was, um, I guess what you would now call almost like a hedge fund guy. He had a passion for rugs. He was very wealthy and he decided he's going to start his own business where he's going to bring in the weavers. He brought in the wool, the designers and everything. And he kind of like became like the CEO, so to speak. And he started to basically have the best of the best in Isfahan work for him. He himself didn't sit there and make the rugs. Yet the Serafian, when you look at the rugs, the rugs all have the signature. And so you have... Yeah, a lot of people assume that the signature matches the weaver. It actually, that is not the case. The weavers oftentimes, now in the case of the pure silk gold rugs, these are highly skilled. These are basically master weavers. But in a lot of the villages with like the tribal rugs and everything, you typically have not so much child labor as it is looked down upon very much so in Iran, um, fortunately. Um, but you have generally the women. Um, they are the ones weaving the bulk of the lower quality Persian rugs that you typically, like the tribal rugs, um, the, the type of rugs that people can weave at homes. Those are predominantly done by women. But when it comes to masterpieces, when it comes to the pure silk, the gold rugs, the very high-end Persian rugs, you, generally speaking, will find that a lot of those are done by men. Unfortunately, it is still obviously the Middle East. Unfortunately, it's sexist, because I always thought of myself as a proud male feminist, but... Um, I'm an equal opportunity offender. I am always been, this is how I raise my kids. But um, when it comes to these types of rugs, generally, um, they're generally made by master weavers, but signature is of the person who pays them. And it is really rare. There are a few exceptions, and I'm going to show you two, I'm going to introduce you to two of them today. So, um, we have three pure silk gomrucks. We have one that is actually named after a good friend of mine. This is Gom. This is a Shayan weaving house in Gom. Then you have over here, and this is where my not so good Farsi comes out. Motavasel. I hope I didn't screw that up. That is also one of the weaving houses. And these two, the larger pieces, these are your average, typical, good quality workshop in gold. Um, these, were, these are very nice pieces. And like, as I always done, as I always tell folks, information is down in the description. So if you have any questions or anything, feel free. If you want to see pictures of any of the rugs and all that, Look down in the description. Um, but the main thing is, these are very nice workshops, but these are not the type of workshops that where you're going to be paying extra for in order when you buy the rug. These are, as is typical, you have a pure silk gom rug, this piece right here has about, I'm going to say 65 to 600 knots per square inch. The one on my left has about seven, 800, really nice pieces. I mean, but you can even from where you are with the camera, you can tell the difference. But these are different grades of pure silk rugs. But what they all have in common, obviously, pure silk, they have the Persian weave, the Persian knot. Um, everything is done really nice, um, and like you said, signatures at the top. Now, when it comes to where signatures matter, and it's not so much that um, I'm going to introduce you to two types of Persian rugs, um, two gom weavers. One is a Isati, right here, and the other one is one that I'm actually going to be grabbing, and that is 
Bear with me here for just one minute. I'm just going to hang it up here. I believe I have featured this piece in also one of my other videos, but you have the Ahmadi family. The Ahmadi family and the Esati family. What is the difference between these two rugs and the one below it or the one to my left? If you, if you are knowledgeable about Persian rugs, if you are a fan of the pure silk, the real, the genuine gom rugs, you will know who the Ahmadis are. You will know who the Isatis are. They make, this is workshops that are renowned for making some of the best, some of the finest, best quality, the material, everything that is used to make these rugs, they're the best. Now, there is one, that video that I actually featured um, not too long ago um, about the family called Jamshidi. And I did specifically did not include them in today's video. The Jamshidis are on a whole different level. So I just wanted you to know. And just to give you an example, the one Jamshidi that I featured costs more than the two masterpieces right here. So with the price of an Ahmadi and the Esatik combined, you would still have to, well, actually, I'm going to take it back. One, two, three rugs together costs as much. These three pieces as that one jump sheety that is the same size as this piece right here. Extremely expensive, but they are, like I said, in a league of their own. They're just way up there. But when you talk about collectible, and these are the pieces here, the Ahmadis, Esatis, and I had a smaller piece that I sold not too long ago. These are just absolutely amazing. And what is important on these types of masterpiece workshops, they know that if they try to shortchange, whether it is the quality of the silk, the dyes and all that, all the work that goes into them, they know it's going to come back to bite them in the butt. So they are very particular about their names, reputation, and they make sure that year after year, the quality matters. So whereas, for example, in this blue piece right here, Shion is real nice. It's a beautiful piece, but it doesn't have the name recognition. So they can make lower quality pieces. They can sometimes make higher ones. When you're buying a gom rug, a typical average gom rug, you're going to see the signature and you're going to say, okay, well, that's nice, but it's no big deal. But when it comes to pieces, like I said, like the Ahmadi, Esati, um, Mohammadis, um, Ananpur, um, these are right below the Jamshidis. And those are the types of pieces that you will see that, for example, when you, um, just to give a perfect example, if you go to my website, mprux.com, you're going to find we have a ton of gold rugs. But I also have a collectible page. In the collectible page, I put gold rugs that certain knowledgeable people, those that know about the gold rugs and they want something special, they will, they know where to go to, to find them. And for example, these two pieces right here, the Ahmadi and the Asati, these are pieces that you will see in my collectible section. These are extremely, not just fine pieces, but the workmanship, the whole thing combined makes for one of the best types of Gomruks. Whereas you're going to find the Shayan piece or the other one, and that is covered up. These will be in my regular GOM sections, but they're not going to be featured in my collectible section. They're not of that high grade, but you're also not paying for them. When you look at the prices, you got the two small pieces here. These are almost half the size. But 
if you, if you were to look at do, pound for pound and dollar and everything and say, okay, you know what? I'll give you a perfect example. I have absolutely no problems pointing out the fact that the blue piece here, the Shayan piece to my left, is twice the size of the Asati almost. And it's really not much of a price difference. So if you want the biggest bang for your buck, I guess, you would say, well, you go with a larger piece. But there's a lot of people who appreciate and they want the fine details. And so they will go with an Asati. So the point I want you to make, and this is very, very important. Before I get behind the camera, and as I always do, I'll show you some of the close-ups and everything. I want you to understand. Just because you see a signature in Persian rugs, don't let anyone tell you that you are getting something remarkable. Even though I just told you that they are, what I'm not telling you is that because of it, you should be paying thousands and thousands of dollars more, or you should be expecting to get much better appreciation that these rugs are incredibly valuable, they are extremely rare. No, I'm not going to give you that kind of what I call BS. What I'm telling you is that these workshops, their silk, the quality, the workmanship, everything is at the highest level because their name depends on it. So we pay more. This is why you also end up paying more when you come to buy them. But you're paying more for a reason. You're not paying for the name. You're paying for the quality and everything. So be just mindful of that when you go into a rug store or if someone is trying to sell you a rug with the signature so that you don't fall in the same trap as so many people have done who have contacted me. So I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to get behind the camera. I'm going to show you some of the features and some of the gomrucks here. Then I'm going to come back to you and say final goodbyes. Again, if you're new to our channel, um, it's all about Persian rugs. Every week I come up with about one or two videos where I feature either different subjects about handmade rugs from all over the world, or I answer the questions of viewers like yourself. And I have no problems doing it. As our channel keeps growing, I'm getting more and more questions virtually every day from viewers as well as from visitors to our website at mprugs.com. I don't have a problem answering your questions if I'm able to. And please, in the description below in this video, um, you will find there is a link to a video in which I show you what type of pictures I need, what file size they need to be and all that. If you don't mind, if you have a question about rugs you want to ask me and you have some pictures, please watch the video below and then send me the pictures. I can look at the pictures and get qu uh, quickly back to you. Also, obviously, if you are into Persian rugs and um, you like our channel, hit the subscribe button below and you will be updated then whenever we, like I said, I do about two videos a week. So, um, and if you hit the like button, obviously it's going to feed my ego and I'm going to say thank you. But with all that out of the way, I'm going to get behind the camera, show you the details, and I'm going to come back to you later and say my final goodbyes. So I'll see you then. So here we are with the close-ups, and I'm just going to, for the sake of, well, actually, let me just start over here. And I think I have featured this Ahmadi in one of my own uh, previous videos. <laughs> like I said, the Ahmadi family is extremely known in the Gom um community. Um, if you are also a fan of pure silk Gomorrah, you will know about the Ahmadis. And, um, and I do apologize for the lighting, but as you can see here, the signature, um, very crisp, very clear. Again, these are very fine pieces. Um, like I said, it has about 900 knots per square inch, but you're not paying for the name so much, you're paying for quality. And this is really what I like about the Ahmadis. The same thing here with the Asati. Um, and 
you can see on both of these pieces, I keep the cam, I keep moving the cameras up and down because depending on the viewing angle, you are seeing just absolutely stunning details on both of these types of rugs. And this is what you are paying for. So, like I said, these are not, I mean, these are just amazing quality pieces. Both of these have about 900 knots per square inch. And um, I'm just going to point out to you, and this is what I'm going to do with both of these rugs. Uh, here is looking down. And I'm just going to do the same thing here. We got the Ahmadi and with the Sati. Now I'm going to go down and I'm going to look up and you can see the difference. You can see how the colors change. And that is what you would expect to see in the genuine gom rugs. This is also, you know, obviously when you have genuine natural silk, then here we have the Shayan piece. The Shayan piece also very nice. Um, this one has about six, seven hundred knots per square inch and the detailing and everything. But again, there is the difference between the two pieces. The Shayan piece, this is something that is, um, you're looking at showpiece quality or what I call masterpiece quality. It's approaching a masterpiece quality. Whereas the Esati, you're looking at more of a, literally art quality, art piece quality. But again, very fine, very detailed, absolutely phenomenal. And then with me holding the camera in one end, let me just remove the Ahmadi. And there is the Motavaser. It's a beautiful design. And this is a design that actually is something that is common in gom rugs. Not very much common in other rugs because it has the design features of different rug designs. You will notice, I'm just going to, you see the Persian rug, fringes and everything. It was woven in. So this is basically a collection of rug designs. You have, I noticed you have the gombat design, you have the traditional, you have the oval design, and then you have the rugs along the sides. You have the paisley, the uh, bolted design. But this piece has about, I want to say about 500 knots per square inch. It's a very nice rug. It's a very, very fine rug. But you have three different types of categories in rugs. You have what I call a standard high quality to my left here. Then to the right, you have this blue piece. This is a showpiece, borderline masterpiece quality. And then you have the Asati in the middle. And as you can see, it's just, a, it just a over the top. This is just one of those pieces. So wanted to show you all of the features. So now I'm going to come back to you as I always do and say my quick goodbyes to you. So there was our little adventure into the world of the pure silk gom rugs. I hope this video was of help to you, especially for those of you that own them or have questions about the rugs with the signatures and all that. So I'm going to be coming back to you with many more videos to come. As I mentioned to you, if you like to feel free to hit the subscribe button. The links to all the rugs, all the information is below. Please feel free to check that out if you like. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Until I come back to you, I wish you and your family the very best. Greetings for me, and I can't wait to bring back to you many more videos to come. Take care. Bye-bye.